All right. Well, we have uh, some light attendance in class today. And when you're used to three, two, occasionally one student, light attendance means that it's just me today. Um, so we're not going to do a full lecture since it's just me uh, in the classroom. Um, and some of the material that we were going to cover today is kind of tricky, weird. Um, there's some weird stereochemistry involved that'll be a lot easier to understand if we talk about it in person. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just start by going through um, the answers to these questions um, that we ended with on Tuesday, and then uh, and then we'll talk about a couple new reactions just so we don't wind up losing a whole lecture. Um, uh, but it'll probably be a, a pretty light, pretty quick recording here. Uh, so like I mentioned on Tuesday, best way to approach these, um, these multi-step reactions is to see if you can chunk them up into uh, multiple reaction, multiple successive reactions. So for instance here, that's definitely ozonolysis, right? Both of those together. which mean, and then we're gonna follow that up by fully reducing whatever we make through the ozonolysis. So, and we're reducing it with the uh, hydride source, not a Grignard reagent or anything. So for this first one, we have the cyclohexene. Cyclohexene, followed by ozonolysis and D and our DMS. Remember ozonolysis, the first step makes that ozonide where you wind up with that kind of weird um, peroxide, epoxide structure. And then the DMS reduces that a little bit and we wind up making, um, splitting the alkene and turning it into carbonyls. So, where we had the alkene bond, we now have two aldehydes. And then the second step was to fully reduce that with the hydride. It's lithium aluminum hydride. So we're gonna wind up taking that aldehyde and turning it, them both into primary alcohols. So our final product is going to look like, for all the carbons back in the same spot, OH, OH. So we get the one, six, hexane, diol is our final product. For B here, once again, we're, it's gonna be the same two steps. So I'm not gonna redraw this one entirely. Um, we're just starting from cyclobutane instead of cyclohexane. So we get one, two, three, four car carbons. So one, four, butane diol. All right, for C, we got starting with the aldehyde, and then we're gonna turn the, we're gonna add an ethyl group. These first two steps are a Grignard reagent. So we start with butanaldehyde, or sorry, I'm sorry, uh, propyl aldehyde. And we're gonna add an ethyl group. So we're gonna end up with a secondary alcohol 
That's just after these first two steps. We're going to take that, or, and that's now in. That's an OH group after the Grignard reagent. So step two is just to take that secondary alcohol and turn it back to a carbonyl so we can do another um, another Grignard reaction. We have to oxidize the secondary alcohol to turn it into the um, pentanone, the suffix for, um, for ketones is you add own to the end, just like you would add all, O-L, if it was an alcohol, so currently it's three propanol. After the third reaction here, or the third set of reactants, we're going to oxidize it to make three, three pentanone. And then we're going to add another Grignard reagent to that. So we're going to wind up with one, two, three, four, five, add another ethyl group, and we turned that, that three pentanone back into three pentanol. It's now just three ethyl, three pentanol. D is just is a straightforward uh, reduction of the aldehyde to turn it into a primary alcohol, followed by step three is turning that out al primary alcohol that we make into a better leaving group. So we're actually stopping at the um, the tosylate group. So we didn't change the carbon structure at all. Steps one and two turn that aldehyde into the alcohol. Step three turns that alcohol into a better leaving group, group that OTS group. And it just stops there. We then followed that up with um, bromide or any other nucleophile. We would just go through an SN2 reaction where we replace the OTS with something else. Last but not least, we do we have a, a series of reactions here for sure. First thing, and this is a bit of review, we're starting with an alkene and we're just exposing it to um, water under acidic conditions. So our first thing is just going to be an acid catalyzed hydration after step one, which is going to leave us with Cyclopentanol. We're going to take the cyclopentanol in step two, just like in C up above. Step two is going to oxidize that and turn it into cyclopentanone. And then step three is phenyl magnesium bromide followed by water. So step three is a Grignard reagent. The Grignard reagent we're using, though, is a, it's not an ethyl group or a methyl group, we're adding, we're adding a benzene ring um, to the carbon that is part of the carbonyl at this point. So our final product here is going to be, let me just white out the screen there, once we get cyclopentanone. Phenyl magnesium bromide is going to turn that into is still a cyclopentyl group. We still have the oxygen attached here after we add the water. We just have a benzene ring attached to the carbonyl carbon. What was the carbonyl carbon?
And so a bit of review there in a bit, a bit of just practicing some of these, these um, oxidations and reductions that we've seen um, talking about the alcohol chapter. And so we'll do a couple slides until we get to the slide on very sharp list because that's where things start getting really weird. Um, the, uh, I suppose the, the one concept that we will add here is just the idea of naming epoxides. We've talked about epoxides before. Um, uh, they are occasionally referred to as oxiranes. Um, that's a much less common name. So for the most part, we're just going to call them epoxides. Um, and in general, we just name epoxides with a prefix. We just specify what two carbons are attached as part of the epoxide group. I'm not sure why we use two numbers when we only use one number for an alkene. Um, but for epoxides, we use two numbers. So this molecule down below, it's our longest continuous carbon chain is five. So it's going to be a pentane. Then it's got an ethyl group and a methyl group that we've seen that before. So three ethyl, two methyl. Then that epoxide group, we would just say is between carbons two and three. So we call it two, three epoxy pentane. Um, and again, I'm not sure why they can't just say two epoxy. Uh, since it, I don't know, epoxide by definition is between two adjacent carbons, um, but this is the IUPAC rules at this point. So we'll go with it and we won't, um, won't bite it too hard. So here's just some practice for naming these, just like, like normal, find your longest continuous carbon chain. So for A, B, propane is our parent molecule. And then we have methyl. One, two, epoxy. Methyl. 2-methyl, 1-2-epoxy propane. You don't technically need the 2 in front of the methyl because if it's propane, there's only one carbon that you could put a methyl on that, that's not just making the carbon chain longer like we've seen before. Um, but it would it's better to be overly specific than to be under-specific. So I'd rather be, um, I'd rather you put the methyl. If you're not sure, put the 2 in front of the methyl. So... The, that way, at least it's unambiguous, even if it is redundant. Um, B, we'll just leave alone. Or sorry, we'll, we'll go through B just so for practice naming. Um, because this is a weird one in that our longest continuous carbon chain. Let me make this figure larger real quick. So in a way that I'll still be able to. So our longest continuous carbon chain that has the epoxide on it is only two carbons long. So our parent molecule for B is actually just ethane. Despite the fact we've got all this other stuff going on, it's going to be an epoxy ethane. And epoxy ethane doesn't really need numbers because if it's ethane and it's an epoxy, it can only really be in one spot. Um, but then we do have the fact that we have two extra branches here that are rather large branches and branches we're not as used to seeing. So those are benzene rings, but when we name benzene rings as a prefix, as a branch, or we use that term phenyl. So this is gonna be diphenyl. as distinct from phenol, right? Phenol means a benzene ring with an OH attached, hence the OL. 
phenyl with a YL, it means that we have a benzene ring as a branch. And we do need to specify, despite the fact that it's just ethane, we do need to specify where each of the benzene rings are because they could be, uh, we could have one, two diphenyl ethane or one, one diphenyl ethane is what we see in this case. So one, one diphenyl epoxy ethane would be the full name for B. Um, and the reason that we're getting into epoxides, so we've seen, we've seen two reactions that can make epoxides um, in terms of um, stereochemistry. So the one was the, the peroxy acids. Um, if you have a peroxy acid, you can wind up taking that extra oxygen seen in this the acid group and adding it to an alkene to make the the um, peroxy or the epoxide and the regular acid um we get the racemic mixture when we do that and the second one is a little bit different if you do bromine reacting with an alkene in the presence of in the presence of water, we get that halohydrin formation. Um, so we would wind up adding, um, adding a bromine to one side of benzene ring and the uh, hydroxide to the other side. Oops. Um, and in this case, we're going to get a mixture boat where there's no difference in the substitution. So we're going to wind up adding the bromine to one side, the OH to the other side, in the anti-configuration. If we then follow that up with a strong base, though, we can wind up with that uh, deprotonating the alcohol and having that turn into an epoxide in, and pushing the bromide off as a leaving group. Um, in both cases, we get a racemic mi mixture of both of the possible molecules that we could make, both of the possible epoxides. Um, and so, so that all seems relatively straightforward. We just need to think about, and the way it's drawn makes it a little bit confusing. I would, I would actually normally think about these as you can add the epoxide to the top side of the molecule or the bottom side of the molecule. And that's going to give you the two enantiomers. Um, that way it doesn't look like we're switching where things are. Um, so if we, instead of looking at that molecule like that, think of it as we can put the methyl here, the isopropyl here, methyl up top, methyl up top and out towards us with the epoxide down. Um, that's a little bit easier to see what's going on when it comes to these enantiomers here. Um, that's not a great drawing of the two of them but basically leave the carbons in the same spot and you can either add the, uh, the epoxide can either be um, above or below all of those substituents. And just because this is the, you know, we haven't, this is a pretty short lecture already. Um, this is the part that's a little bit weird. Um, and this is, uh, Barry Sharpless, who I actually need to update this slide. I'll try to remember to do that by next Tuesday. Um, he's actually one of the few people that's won two Nobel Prizes now. He won a Nobel Prize last year or the year before um, for his work in what's called a click reaction, which is a cyclo edition we'll talk about in a, in a couple chapters. Um, but his first Nobel Prize um, was in 2001 when he he figured out that you could use a chiral catalyst um, to potential to get 
to form an epoxide um, in a very stereospecific way. So that we only, instead of getting a racemic mixture of two epoxides, to be able to make just a single epoxide or favor a single epoxide. Um, and what that winds up looking like is um, we use this, this DET molecule in the presence of titanium tetraisopropoxide. Um, if we do that, this titanium isopropox, tetraisopropoxide, and we use um, one of the enantiomers of DET as a catalyst, we get one enantiomer. If we switch to the other enantiomer of the catalyst, we get the opposite enantiomer as our product. Right, and the way, and again, we'll go over this again so that you can ask questions on Tuesday. This is that complicated mechanism that that uh, I want you to be able to be here to ask questions for. Um, basically, this is a really, really specific reaction that only works when we're talking about making an epoxide on a molecule that has an a um allylic hydroxide and allylic alcohol so if you have an alkene and then one carbon away you have an oh group this reaction works and the way we can tell what product we're going to make is basically you reorient the molecule so that that carbon that has the oh is in the back right so set it up so that your, all of your other R groups are positioned wherever they need to be so that you can put the that allylic hydroxide group, that allylic alcohol in the back right corner. If you do that, if you use plus DET as your catalyst, you put the epoxide ring above the plane of the molecule. And if you use minus, you put the, the epoxide ring below the plane of the molecule. Right, and so we'll practice with that on Tuesday. We'll start with this slide going through these practice problems. So try and, and um, figure work these out. Use this, don't worry too much about the mechanisms. This is a really nasty, complicated mechanism. Um, Focus on getting the stereochemistry right. Reorient the molecules so that you, you can visualize them as a plane pointing out of the board and into the board, or out of your paper and into your paper, with the allylic alcohol in the back right corner. And then you can use that rule plus is above, minus is below. So try and draw your correct structures here. Um, we will have a quiz this weekend. Uh, it'll be on on uh, those Williamson ether synthesis quest, uh, reactions that we were practicing on Tuesday, um, and maybe maybe a little bit more of these review questions, um, like we opened with today. Maybe some more reaction series like this that come back to some of the reactions we've seen in the past. Um, We'll see, I'll go put that together as soon as I'm done with this recording here. So short recording today since nobody is here to ask questions. Is there anything else I wanted to add about this before we go? We'll, we'll finish talking about epoxides and start talking about thiols um, on Tuesday. So. Just that Sharpless reaction, they call it the Sharpless asymmetric epoxidation. Um, and just a reminder, follow this rule. Put that oxygen in the right spot, and then plus puts the epoxide up, minus puts the epoxide down. And everybody have yourselves a good weekend, and I'll see everybody on Tuesday.